let's go through the brown stages. And what are the most important things to look for in terms of advancement? Um, what I've done with this chart is highlight in yellow what are the key things to look for, okay? So this is a simplified version of that other chart that you have, okay? So in stage one, declaratives are incomplete. There really is no elaboration here, right? In stage two, they're still incomplete, but there's some elaboration, okay? This could even be stage three because we've elaborated the noun phrase and the verb phrase. But the important thing to remember in stage two is declarative sentences are still incomplete, okay? Um, in stage three, they may be complete. I could move this over. But the big thing to look for is if you see a complete simple sentence, a grammatically correct simple sentence, it's probably stage three. Okay? Because of the fact that complete simple sentences don't really emerge until this point. So that's something to look at. Um, my baby is going is a complete simple sentence. And why is it complete? What does he have here? Auxiliary and present progressive. Auxiliary and present progressive. So that's a key to, to look for in the um, declarative stage. I'm going to continue before I go to negative and show you the next two stages. Here we are at stage four with declaratives. If we look at stage four, compound and complex structures emerge. If you find a sentence with a compound or a complex structure, it's stage four, okay? The only compound structures are and, okay? Child starts conjoining clauses or phrases with and, okay? And their complex sentences have what we call object complements. So you have a subject and a verb and then the object of the main clause is elaborated into its own dependent clause. Object complements. And what you look for to identify those are words like, I think it is fun. I think. He said, come here now. I wish I could go. Okay? So you look for think, said, wish, guess. Those kinds of words. Verbs of internal state or of communication. Okay. Um, also, the infinitive phrase emerges here. And that's an exciting thing because the infinitive phrase is a complex structure. What happens is if you find to plus a verb, to go, to eat, to drink, to sit, it can't be the only verb in the sentence. All right. So actually, even though it's a phrase, a verb phrase, it's considered a complex verb phrase, and it's evidence of complexity. Look for that in stage four. Um, in stage five, just more of the same, more com complexity. These are the types of complex sentences, relative clauses um, <coughs> that emerge, the if emerges, indirect objects emerge, and gerunds another phrase. A gerund is when an ing verb is acting like a noun. Okay? So they're not all complex sentences, but they're evidence of complexity. Are there questions about that? Okay. If we go back, so what are the big things in, um, what are the big things to look for in de declaratives to assign stages? What are the two big things you're going to look for? What happens at stage three? <laughs> Complete simple sentences because they're starting to use the auxiliaries and complements. So stage three is a big one. Circle that. And what is big about stage four and five? Complexity. Complex and compound. Anytime you have complex and compound structures, it's stage four or five. Those are the two big things that you're going to look at, okay? All right, let's look at negatives real quick. 
At stage one, they just throw the negative word, stage one and two. They throw the negative word in front of the subject of the verb. They just, haven't you heard kids? No go, no eat, no me. They just put the negative in front of the subject or the verb. And the only difference between one and two is they use no exclusively, and here they start using not. So, <coughs> different. so the big change in negative sentences comes at stage three. What's changed here? What are you going to look for in terms of negatives at stage three? The negative term follows the subject. They moved it syntactically to follow the subject. So when you're looking for negative sentences, you know if you see the negative term following the subject, stage three. Okay. At stage four, this is when they use true contracted negatives. Okay. Now in this case, is the copula contracted or the negative? The negative. So the copula is uncontractable, right? But they use true contracted negatives. So if you have a child that uses do and not separately, and he says don't as well, you know he's actually at stage four, as long as it's in following the subject. Okay. And then stage five, just more complex. All right, so what's the big changes, two big changes for negatives? What are they? At stage, and what happens at three? The negative so follows the subject. The negative follows the, the, the subject. And what happens at stage four? True contracted negatives. Those are the big things for negatives. Let's look at interrogatives. Nothing big happens at stage one, two, and three for interrogatives. How is a child signaling an interrogative at stage one, at two, and at three? Intonation. Rise of intonation. Mommy eat? Mommy eating? Mommy is eating? Nothing's changing in terms of the interrogative structure. The only thing that's changing is the phrasal elaboration, right? And whether it's a complete sentence or not. <coughs> but in terms of interrogatives, it's intonation. The big change for interrogatives happens at stage four. I know your book says three, four. Just memorize four, okay? <laughs> um, and that's when they take that auxiliary verb or the copula and they put it at the beginning of the sentence. So they do what we call the interrogative reversal and they put it before the subject. Instead of saying that is mine, like a declarative, they say, is that mine? Right, so that's the big change. In five, they're using motives. So if I asked you, what's the key to look for for interrogative sentences, what would you say? Inversion. Inversion. And when does it happen? Stage four. Stage four. You guys got that? Good. And then the last oh, um, thing I wanted to mention, imperatives. If you see a true imperative, like, give it to me. I know it's imperative because what's the subject? You. you. And it's implied, right? So, if you see that, that emerges at stage three. Okay. Now, in terms of brown stages, and we're looking at sentence types and complexity, it's not mastery. It's what's most characteristic. 